Greetings! It is the last Friday of the month and it is one o'clock and so I have a special guest today, Lauren Battistini. Hello, Angela. Hello, Lauren. She is on. So I am getting ready to join and invite her on. So let's see here. Greetings, everyone. Welcome. Lauren's getting ready to join the screen here. All right. Hi, Lauren. It Hi. worked. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you, Anne? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited about today because um, not only are you a business colleague, you are my friend on a personal level. And um, I just appreciate um, everything, um, you know, to you saying yesterday. Just really extremely busy behind the scenes. Thank you. And I appreciate you on today. And uh, I could see I am everybody. Happy are to be here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. So our creative okay. uh, look at them. They're all way. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. We have Lauren on uh, as my special guest. I have a guest that comes on that I'm on the last um, Friday of the month. And, and Lauren is my special guest today. And we're going to talk about architectural color um, how she in the fashion industry and transitioned over to architectural color and really get to know Lauren better because I have to say I'm so honored to know her personally on a personal level she is a woman of strength um, you know positivity of encouragement so thank you Lauren so much for coming on um, our audience no, I know, you know, um, they want to know about you, but um, just giving a little bit of great We met in January 2018 um, when you came in to do a presentation at a sewing fashionista meeting. So I'm going to show a picture <laughs> of you. Oh boy. <laughs> of you leading and teaching as you, you know, normally do and you're good at. There you are. Going to fabrics back then to to our sewing fashionistas, so that's when we first met. Following that, um, after that, a month, um, half a year, you know, um, learning and encouraging each other about the business, um, in the creative industry, and I know, you know, us busy. So, but that's how we met. So, Lauren, a little bit about you, uh, you know, and about where you reside and good hobbies that you enjoy as well. I just color. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Anne. Your voice is breaking up just a little bit, but it might be a problem on my end. Do you hear me okay? I do. Okay, do perfect. All right. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I know that we're going to have so much fun today, crack some jokes, talk about art, fashion, business, and life. You asked me to introduce myself. I'm Lauren Battistini. I am born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, but I've been here in Houston, Texas for almost 20 years, so I do call this home. I love it here in Houston. Hobbies. Uh, when I had time and before the pandemic, I was a, a swimmer and plan to get back to that. I also am a language learner. I speak Spanish as my second language, and then now I'm learning Greek as my third language, which now I understand really where the expression it's all Greek to me comes from. It's a very complex language with its own alphabet. And I also enjoy art and really any new adventures. I'm an adventurer. Yeah. You, you love just exploring and checking out new things. So you're yeah. always traveling. I mean, whenever, you know, we're talking about Lauren, she's traveling somewhere, you know? <laughs> so, okay. So how, did you get into consulting? Well, I've been involved in the world of color ever since right around the time I had my third child. So uh, that would have been about 14, almost 15 years ago. And I have a background in color by virtue of my stepmom. My stepmom is, is and was a very talented 
color analyst, and she used to sell a cosmetic line back in the 80s called Beauty Control Cosmetics. Some of you on this call might remember, where your cosmetics are color coded according to your skin tone and what, quote, season you are. So I literally would sit at her feet and observe her color analyzing women and telling them what colors look best on them. And so that's how my interest in color first came about. And then about 15 years ago, like I said, I got into color consulting sort of on a whim. I wanted to do something. I was a stay-at-home mom and I wanted to do something fun and creative and also could earn a little bit of income. <laughs> not old enough to remember. I'm sorry. These comments are distracting me, but in a funny way. Funny, Roz, you're not old enough to remember. Oh, I see. Other people know about beauty control. Anyway, so 15 years ago, I went and I got certified in a newer area of color, cons color analysis whereby you're not just classified into one of four categories, but based on your undertone, your skin tone, your hair and eye color, you could be one of uh, 16 different categories. And so I started doing that for a business very part-time. And then I started going on local and nationally syndicated television. I would do a variety of different fashion style and color topics. So I was kind of like a media expert. Um, I say expert, you know, color was my, my line of work. And so at that point in time, I was more in the fashion and beauty world. And then I realized that that's just a very small niche market and it wasn't really going to sustain me. And I needed a business model that could be a little bit more sustainable and have a broader appeal. So then I decided to transition over to the world of architectural color consulting, which means that I pick out all of the colors for both interior, exterior, commercial and residential projects. So a homeowner might call me someone remodeling their house might call me, a commercial property developer might call me. I had a project last week, a guy who's building out an office complex and he wanted me to go in and help him with countertops, uh, flooring and carpeting and then paint colors. So anywhere where a color needs to be picked on a, on a property, that's where you'll find me, current, current day. Yeah. These comments are funny, each other. <laughs> are you guys still cracking jokes down there, ladies? Are they are um, going into architecture? And you realize how uh, color affects in our environment. So how does you know affect us? How does color affect us? That is an excellent question, and that's why I love my line of work so much. And it's impossible to be in a bad mood working in color because my job is to just make people happy in the way that they use color because color affects every single area of your life. It even affects your diet. If you talk to doctors who specialize in whole food nutrition, especially they're going to tell you to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables and whole foods of all different colors, because that's where you get your nutrients. So color is important in the food world. It's also important for our uh, mental well-being, which is why when I go to specify colors in people's homes, I ask them, how do you want to feel in your home? What kind of vibe are you going for? And we select colors accordingly because studies have been shown that color affects the way that we feel. Certain colors, green, for example, it's, it's a, it, it evokes feelings of being outside in nature. And especially during this time of 2020, being secluded, quarantined, people, I'm getting a lot of phone calls of people who are wanting to revamp their home. Uh, so that they can feel like it's more comforting to them and it's a place of respite since they can't go out and travel now. And so color affects us emotionally and um, also in the business world. And this is one of the areas where I really do enjoy working when I have the opportunity. It's working with companies uh, because we make purchasing decisions based a lot on emotion and color ties into emotion. So when we're talking about packaging of products or actually the product colors themselves, uh, that is extraordinarily important to make sure that you market to your right demographic, that you sell a product at the right price point. The color has to give the look and feel of the price point you're wanting to offer that product for. So there's a whole side of color that involves business, strategy, marketing. It just affects every, it also affects, here's where it affects you too in the retail world. Whatever colors happen to be on trend at the moment, those are the colors you're going to find in a store. And you all here in this audience, you all are all about uh, building your wardrobes and fabric and things. You're not going to be able to find readily every single color you ever wanted. The colors that you're able to find in the stores right now are going to be based on trends that have been set for you. So color affects everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that you brought in the color, it affects everything you were talking about. 
color trends that are are you able to share with us about the global trends that's happening right now yes and i can give you some broad information i i pull my uh trending information from a variety of sources all the way from italy to whatever it is that pantone is doing to all of the different paint companies particularly benjamin moore which is who i affiliate with on paint business overall what we're seeing especially in this world we're in now with all this uncertainty and I'll show you a color palette, actually. This is, Benjamin Moore just released it. It is their 2021 color palette. All of the colors are soft. They're pretty muted. They're warm. A lot of them are warm. We're not seeing a whole ton of cold grays anymore. We're seeing a lot of earth tones and some beiges and some rosy browns. And all of those colors link us back into feeling comforted, uh, feeling safe, we're not seeing a whole ton of super bright colors. Now, in the spring, I've looked at Pantone's colors, especially for the fashion world. You'll see some brightness in those colors, but even still, they're not jarringly bright. We're at a, at a global level. We're needing to have comforting colors that are soft and gentle and pleasing to the eye. All right. Great answer. Um, so to your thoughts, please. Speaking of emotion, I found myself using white now wanting all white sheets in cobalt blue complement cobalt blue complement so those are kind of like the soothing colors right uh, i wouldn't say that bright white is really a soothing color it's definitely a nice clean color and cobalt blue i think maybe the question is does cobalt blue work with white is that the question i think it is and yes they're both very saturated colors white is very strong and vibrant and in, in, in fact in a home to the human eye it translates almost as its own color yeah it's you're, that strong maybe clarify your andrea if you don't mind um maybe clarify that for lauren um you you spoke about how we're going to um never andrea says never have wanted no i am drawn to these oh she's saying she's drawn to them right now. okay well, you know, colors have different meanings for different people, okay? So typically here in the United States, for example, we think of white as uh, a color symbolic of purity, a fresh start, and... Samina says, dang, my 2020 wardrobe is now jarringly bright. Okay, so before anyone comments, let me say two things about white. Number one, white could be that it's a great color that you can build a wardrobe around, or you can, it's a great interior color because it's basic and you can pair almost any other bright color with it. Now, this comments, uh, Samina and Katie, uh, dang, my 2020 wardrobe is now drawingly bright. Let me speak to this. Although I don't work in personal color analysis anymore, I will say this, my wardrobe is also drawingly bright. That's because those are the colors that look best on me. And really, as humans, we understand color more than we think we do, and we tend to wear colors and gravitate toward colors that naturally look best on them on ourselves. So I bet that you look great in these drawingly bright colors. She does. So when we talk about trends, trends are, are indicative of what's going on in the world around us. Sometimes trends can be set. I'll give you a great example. Sometimes trends can be set by the culinary industry. An example is with pomegranate. Remember all those years ago, there was a campaign all about pomegranate juice, how it had all these antioxidants. Well, sure enough, the fashion, home, and interior, and beauty segment started pulling out color palettes based on that pomegranate. Also, colors are developed based on what's going on in the political and socioeconomic climate. So trends are just trends, and they sort of dictate what types of things you'll find in the marketplace, but you can wear whatever color you want yep. to evoke whatever feeling you want to evoke. Yeah. So trends are, the, you'll see the majority um, around the majority of people or, or the majority around you just coming is happening, but you still have the option to express yourself in the way you feel most comfortable. Exactly. And now, you know, we're talking about two different areas. One is the area of personal style and color and the colors that look best on you. And those have nothing to do with trends. But then we're talking also at this point about the architectural side of things um, in, in the world of home decor, for example, where those are we do follow those trends more so the fit says all those muted tones caused me to feel down emotionally painted my house 
in every room. <laughs> and Samina says, thank you. So that was- Oh, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, sounds like Andrea, that was like a personal, a personal experience and a personal um, choice as well. Yeah, that makes you happy to paint your house blue today, you know, you that. So, all right. Yes. You were gonna talk about, you know, um, what, what the options are, what are the options or the best shades of white for your home, how to choose that um, for your home. Yeah. So, are you Yes. So, and, and this is based on the, I'm going to answer this based on the experience that I've been having lately with a lot of my clients will call me and they have already done a lot of research on Pinterest and they'll tell me, I want a white kitchen. I want a white kitchen, but their home contains a lot of earthy elements. The, the flooring is a reddish orange oak, for example. The backsplash in the kitchen happens to have some very warm tones. The furniture in the living room, all the big pieces of furniture are more earth toned. And you understand what I mean by earth tone. I'm going to actually show you an example. Earth tones like this, just very warm. This is just one example I'm going to give you, okay? Now, if we put a white kitchen in, and this is, this is white right here, the, and it's hard to see in this light, but that is so bright and stark, it's overkill. It does not work with the earth tone. So what I have to come in and do as the color expert is suggest an alternative. When we're dealing with earth tones, I'm always going to suggest, if you want that white kitchen, I'm going to help you achieve the look and feel of it with an off-white. Can you see here? Mm -hmm. This right here is not a pure white, but it's the version of white that works for what they're trying to do within their home. So the times in which you can really use pure white in a home, now that we're talking home decor, it's going to be where you do have other very saturated, bright colors, or you have a lot of artwork and furniture placement and countertops that are black and white and, and bright gray and very saturated colors. Maybe you like bright modern artwork or, uh, yeah, basically it's whenever you have those types of colors present in the home. You really can't get away with a pure white in the home for even trim. Um, and certainly not white cabinets unless you have equally vibrant colors in the home. Oh. Wow. So how do you how do you choose for them? Do you bring in your color charts, your 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 all the different shades of white? Because there's so many. How do you know? Yes, okay. Here's the funnest, 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 funnest part of my job. And I get so excited about this. I, I get so excited that I jump up and down sometimes in my appointments because my clients come to me and they're used to looking at stuff like this and there is no way. It's so hard to pick colors just based on a little square. And often they, it's just, it's overwhelming. So I work with Benjamin Moore as my preferred brand. Literally Benjamin Moore has the best color selection over 3,500 colors. And so I do go in with, I have about a hundred to 110 color boards that represent the most widely used whites, uh, bluey whites, off whites, ivories, and creams that we use as a starting point. And if we don't like, and I'll show you some here, if we don't like any of these boards, any of these selections, right, then in my car, I have every single one of these colors that Benjamin Moore ever made in these rectangular paper strips that I can go pull from my trunk and we can walk around the house using a larger color space. Um, and so I basically help my clients narrow it down from 3,600 colors to, you know, whatever they need in their home. And we always base it, Anne, on what's going on in their home. Permanent elements such as flooring, countertops, light fixtures, pieces of art that they're never going to part with. Your paint colors and all your surface colors have to coordinate. Did I answer your question? I feel like I went off on some tangent. Oh, you did. So much fabric says, that looks good. Carrie says, number two, so much easier on the eye. I think that was when we yeah. um, so That was when we were looking at our earth tones. Yeah. So to fit their paints, their blue, gray, whites are true to true tone. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Can, are you guys able to hear me? Am I still breaking up? I had breaking up just a little bit. Oh, thanks. Hello, Zabida. Perfect answer, says Soda Fit. Um, okay. So can you share about more about 
like you mentioned going into the home, but from beginning to end, when you meet a client, how do you, in case anyone, you know, is interested in your services, because I know you're also um, traveling a lot to do work as well a project. How do you, from beginning to end, uh, work with the client? Kind of give us a general, you know, idea. Of the okay. okay, so I do in-person consultations at the moment. There will be a time in the future where I try to help people online with color choices, but it's a different type of business model. And for the time being, I prefer to go to a person's location so that I can see up close and in person everything you have going on in your home. I do both interior and exterior color consultations. And so first people call me and they, they give me an idea of what they're looking to do. As I said previously, it could be a home builder and he needs me to go in and pick spec colors that are gonna work for all his model homes. Or uh, it could be a restaurant franchisee, for example. I had a couple call me a few months ago and they needed paint colors for the exterior that work with their company logo. So we, we have a preliminary conversation and I base all of my quotes, you know, my rates are all based on things like how many colors you need, what the square footage is of the building, uh, what surfaces we'll be looking at, because I'm, I'm usually not just picking out paint colors. A lot of times I'm picking out things like roofing and siding and, and tile and carpeting and, and wood and paneling and whatnot. So we have that conversation and then I go out to the property. Now for interior color consultations, I do a walkthrough of every room in the house. And, the, and I also sort of interview my clients to find out what do they want. Sometimes people will tell me, look, I really want grays. But my problem is, is that I have all these earthy Tuscan looking furniture pieces in my house and I'm not going to be replacing them because I bought them in Ethan Allen all these years ago and I'm not repainting the furniture. So I want touches of gray in my house. Well, if you have really earthy brown tones going on in your furniture and the rest of your home, I'm not going to come in and give you a super bluey gray. We might consider something that's kind of in between gray and beige, a grayish. So I always ask my clients what look they're going for and I try to accommodate them to the best of my abilities, but bearing in mind that Frankly, I'm, I'm the expert on color and that's why they hired me. So I, I have to give them an honest answer and tell them, you know, really blue grays won't work in this home. It's gonna look too cold with all of your warm earthy surroundings. Let's try, try to find a middle ground. But I do a walkthrough of every single room in the house and I utilize these color boards first and foremost. And we walk around and we look at how this color looks against you know, perpendicular to the floor, perpendicular to the countertops so that we can see how these colors reflect because the colors of a home all work together. And if even one part of it is wrong, if the paint color is wrong, it throws the whole aesthetic and the whole decor scheme off completely. I feel like there was something else that I wanted to say about my color. Oh yes, about my exteriors. I have started working on more exteriors. Can you hear me okay? I can. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love working on the exteriors because you have to take into account several factors how far apart you are from your next door neighbors on either side, because whatever they have going on with their paint colors in their home, you need to make sure you, that you pick some, we have to make sure we pick a color scheme that doesn't look like it's, it's um, out, of, out of sync with what's going on in the neighborhood. And then you have neighborhood associations where you have to get your colors approved. So we have to work through that process. And then you have things like foliage and landscaping. Just the other day I was working with a client um, on her exterior and uh, she has this, she wanted a green door and she has all this beautiful uh, green landscaping going on in the front. So I made sure that the green that we picked for her front door looks like it coordinates with what's going on with the greenery in the front of the house. And I do on my exteriors a two step, a, a two appointment process. The first time I go out and we do a walk around and we narrow it down to a couple of colors. Usually it's two main colors and two trim colors just as options. Then I go back to the paint store and I paint up even larger than this. I paint up large paint boards on canvases. And then I go back out to the property and we make our final decision. Because when you're doing exteriors, there's so much at play. The sunlight, like I said, what's going on with the neighbors. And, and you, it's, it's hard to tell just from here how a color is going to look. And exterior paint jobs are usually very expensive. So I wanna make sure that we get it right for the client. I just love what I do so much. I can't even, and then I get to meet people. So I make friends with all my clients, you know, 
And then a lot of times they have babies and then they have dogs and you know, I love dogs and then they have cats. So by the time it's all said and done, I'm friends with everybody and we're laughing and cracking jokes and everybody's happy because color brings joy to people's lives when it's done right. And plus, Lauren, always been a personable person. Remember how we were talking when you came over to visit? I would be that person, I person in the corner and you would be the person with the tray of food going around serving everybody you're the you the life of the party and i would be the shy little girl <laughs> well you would be there making sure that everybody was taken care of you'd be the one carrying the food tray around and you would have coordinated the whole thing and i'd be the person who'd be cracking jokes and stirring up trouble my old swim coach used to tell me that i'm the what did he say that i'm the stir the the stir that stirs the the straw that stirs the drink mm. he said i'm not the biggest I'm not the biggest party animal, but I'm the one who gets things going. You're right. You're right. I do like taking care of people. And you would you be do. the life of the party, stirring, stirring it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we work well together. Yeah. Um, so if it has a question, full transition from warm to light after life changes, is it possible? So if you have maybe a... Is this a question about personal coloring, uh, personal... And warm to light, I don't understand, because do you mean warm to cool, or do you mean dark to light? For example, earthy yellow goals to soft cool. So are you asking if um, like going through a life event, life-changing event, um, you transition from warm to lighter look after life changes, is it possible to change colors? I would think so. I would think, I mean... That's, that's really a question that I believe, Andrea, you're asking about your personal coloring and colors that, oh, you're talking homes. Yes, we are. I am talking homes. Okay, you're talking homes too. Okay, yes. So really, you can transition to whatever you want in your home, depending on how you want to feel. I used to have, and I say this all the time, and I don't know how we endured this. I had this bright cherry red color on my living room wall. And y'all, my kids were little at the time. I had three little kids bouncing off the walls. And this red wall was just too energetic, too much, to the point where finally a few years ago I said, basta, yeah, I can't do any more of this red wall. And we had to tone it down. So, yes, you can transition. I don't think I'm answering your question right because I'm not understanding what, exactly what you're asking. If you want to rewrite the question, I, I'll try to answer it for you. So, Lauren, after you found that you repainted the wall, did the kids come down? <laughs> did the kids come after the red wall? I'll you know, okay, first of all, I would like to say that this repainting of the walls coincided with a time in my life that I decided to stop yelling at my kids and chill, my, ch slow my roll a little bit and calm down as a parent. So the combination probably of toning it down and doing a softer, softer, creamy wall and me learning how to calm, be a calmer parent, they both worked together. That makes so much together. That makes that yeah because like you mentioned earlier color affects your mood so yes and, and i will say this that as i've worked in the field of color all these years what i've found is that because i'm surrounded by color all the time and that's what i do i look at color all day long from a personal perspective i really do wear a lot of black and white and denim and just put pops of color because i'm staring at color all day long i don't necessarily want to wear it all the time in my home i've toned it down a little bit too with my color palette because I don't want so much bright all the time. Andrea says, I know it's hard on here to talk about explaining. I wanted to know how you work with a client to transform an entire home. I know ah. it's costly, but what process? Okay, so my process of working with a home, let's take, for example, Andrea, a remodel. And let's say that I have a client, and this happens all the time. They say, we're in the process of remodeling the whole interior, but we can't do it all at once. And, that, and I love when people call me at this point, because if you call me at the point where we're looking to pick out your new flooring, your new shower tiles, name your surface, you know, even blinds and furniture pieces. What I'm able to do is if you bring samples to me, we can have an appointment in your home and we can look at all of the samples of tiles and carpeting and, and, and metallic finishes and you name it coordinate all those and then we pick the paint colors in the end because remember you have a limited number of hardware and surface colors in the marketplace to choose from but you really have an unlimited number of paint colors that you can select from so i always select paint last 
So if I have a client who wants to do a whole home remodel, if we can sit down in the beginning with all the different samples, I prefer to work that way. And then we can guarantee that the home looks beautiful and fluid and all the surfaces are harmonious with one another. Um, I hope that that answers your question. That's the way, that's, that's my process and that's the way that I prefer to work. In fact, last week a lady called me and she wanted me to come in and do paint colors for her, but she had not yet installed the flooring. She didn't have the shower done and they were gonna be coming and they wanted to paint first. I said, please don't. Wait until you have these samples and let's look at the samples together and then we select paint. Hi, Blue Dot Sews. Yeah, Blue Dot Sews, sending hearts. Um, Lauren, I'm so excited, you know, the future of, you know, because it takes a lot to transition the fashion industry to the architectural side. So I'm really excited and just very, you know, about your dream for it. So can you share in, um, that you want to take your business, you know, in addition to doing homes and, and local businesses and stuff like that? Um, what are your hopes and dreams for your Okay, hopes and dreams. This is my specialty. I love, 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 I love, I love being an entrepreneur, first of all. And I love taking, the biggest thrill for me is daydreaming for hours at a time to figure out what direction I could take my business. What new things can I do with color to benefit my clients? I'm constantly daydreaming. And hold on just one second. Do you work with interior designers or separately with your clients? Okay, I need to answer this question. Samina, I love working with interior designers and I always offer to work with them. Sometimes it's tricky because interior designers, they are creative professionals and they have a very specific idea of their aesthetic and what furniture pieces and artwork they want to use. So sometimes they do not want to work with me, not because they don't like me, but I, I think that maybe they, they're worried that like, there'll be you know, too many quote cooks in the kitchen where all I do is I say, I, I'm there to supplement what an interior designer would do. Some interior designers don't under, they, they'll admit that they don't really feel comfortable selecting colors. So they'll pull me in to develop a color scheme for them and then they go and pick out all the decor and stuff. Where were we? We were talking about hopes and dreams for my business. Before we, so start, said, before we start on that, so if it said, I'm in the, yes, I'm in the process, but I'll laundry, I'll DM you. So you're going to yes. get them. All right. Cool. And when, and when you DM me, um, Andrea, let me know, you know, um, square footage of your home, what surfaces you're looking at, and then how many paint colors you think you need for your house. And I'll, I'll write up a quote for you and we can, we can take it from there. And I appreciate your good questions. They're, they're wonderful questions. And thank you for your interest. Okay. We want to get, we want to talk some more about daydreaming. Yes. The reason why I'm asking you, because it's again, because the last time you came to visit, you know how it is during the pandemic time, we're all kind of feeling slow. And you told me you were the first one in my garden, in my little inner garden back there. <laughs> I love that garden. Dreaming. You're, you specifically told me, Anne, never stop dreaming never stop dreaming big and you're always you're like i like i mentioned earlier but you probably didn't hear me you're just this positive person that encouraging that is always building up you know, very hopeful so that's why i want to ask you you know uh, i am a teacher, um what things for your business because i i think you know I, i'm excited for you because i can see it see it and feel it and like you said don't be afraid to dream big so that's why I, I, I thank see you thank you for asking me this question so I'm going to talk to you about my sort of my process about how I go about building my business I would say that I'm the queen of the professional pivot every couple of years I've literally had to realign my business uh, and it's not necessarily because I made a mistake although I've made plenty of those it's just that I see that that particular business model is no longer working for me it's not sustainable anymore, so I need to redirect. And that's the beauty of my industry. Color is such a broad field. I've been certified in several different areas of color, and so that gives me the freedom to be able to expand my business as I see fit. So I've been doing a lot of daydreaming lately. And I know, one, I know a few things. I don't know how they will all materialize, but here's what I know. And I have three dogs, and I'm sorry, and they're making noise. They are my uh, business partners. I call them my... CFOs, chief fun officers, and then CTMs, uh, uh, chief troublemakers. You might hear them in the background. 
Um, so what I was saying about what I know to be true as I expand my business, I'm going international. Um, the first place I'm planning on expanding is Greece. I don't even know why. I went to Greece last year, fell in love with the country, fell in love with wanting to learn the language. I know a few people over there. I've begun to make some professional business contacts. I have a media kit now developed and in, in, it's, it's all in Greek. What I'm going to be doing over there with my color consulting, I don't know. All I know is I'm expanding. And I also know that um, you mentioned earlier that I did fashion design school. I did that from 2013 to 2016. And I really have to show you people. <laughs> this is my, I have, to say, I have to take a detour for a second. I spent an entire semester making this in couture jacket making. We called it couture class. I love my professors, the two Bridgets, who I know a lot of you all know, but I did, I did it, I did it. I just wanted to prove to you guys that I've sewn some things, yay. So the only class I liked though in fashion design school, truly, and, and my professors were amazing, but the only class I really enjoyed was fashion sketching. And so oftentimes I would find myself in fashion design school drawing and painting, and it's the only thing I really enjoyed. So I love the fact that I had this experience in fashion design school because I learned so much, so many wonderful skills that I can apply later, perhaps in the home decor world. And so I'm gonna expand internationally. I wanna expand my color consulting business to be able to do larger commercial projects with color. Somehow, and I don't know how yet, incorporate my art into all of this. Also utilize my other business skills. I do a lot of cold calling, networking, um, marketing and promoting of others' businesses. So somehow, some way, through a lot of prayer, a lot of daydreaming, a lot of writing notes out, a lot of strategizing, I'll figure this all out. Uh, all I can tell you is that right now I'm seeing my, my architectural color consulting business here domestically. It's beginning to expand again. Thank the Lord. And I hope and pray that I can somehow incorporate my art. I don't know how yet. And I know I'm sitting here being vague and I don't, you know, I get super excited about my business projects. And like you said, I love to encourage other people. So I like talking about things I'm working on. Some people say, oh, don't, don't talk about what you're working on. Don't give those things away. But actually, if I'm super pumped and jazzed about a new business idea, I have no problem talking about it because I'll either make it happen or I won't make it happen. Um, knowing you- Just an idea. Knowing you, you're going to make it happen. <laughs> you're going to make it happen. So, Lauren, I have learned a lot watching you pivot. It's fantastic to see a business and recognize the need creatively. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. this, is, this is what I want to uh, also say is that I firmly believe that all of the past experiences that we have uh, educationally and professionally, entrepreneurially, just because they didn't work out doesn't mean, like in my case, that they didn't serve me at a particular point in time. And that those skills that you learn and those experiences that you have, some call them failures. I don't. I don't call them failures. I call them professional experiences from which I learned a whole ton. And it is a foundational, these are foundational experiences and elements that I utilize to build upon something even greater for my future. Now, I'm going to tell you. The only thing right now that stops me, I think, from just going full force with my art, it, part of it's fear, you know, part of it's fear. Uh, part of it's the fact that I have an accounting degree from 1994 and I'm trying to utilize that logical, logical brain, like, oh no, how are you gonna make money? But then part of me's a dreamer. So every week I'm kind of vacillating back and forth between go for it, be a weird funky artist, and no, stick to just doing your color consulting, be a real businesswoman. But why not do both? And I, I, I envision my future somehow melding all of these different elements and making it come together or having two arms of my business, one being the color consulting and the other being the artistic side. Quite frankly, the artistic side could delve into the field, into the field of art for home decor. And then that really fits into the color consulting. Thing. Who knows? But if I'm just so excited thinking about it. Yeah. So much fabric that so she'll definitely make it happen. I agree. I agree. Thank you, Rosie. You will. Um, so we talked about art because from day one, from day one, you, you always mentioned about your passion for your art. 
Yes. Do you, are there any around you that you can share with us, kind of get a, a sneak peek of your artwork? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I, I'm going to show you a couple of pieces that I did in the past, and then I'm going to show you what I'm working on now. So while you share it, can you give us the inspiration and the story behind it as well? Yes, I will. So I'll, I'll take you back sort of to the beginning and the way that I used to do art. So I really wasn't confident at all because I didn't grow up really doing art. And, you know, I was nervous about it. I, like I said, I have an accounting degree. I'm supposed to be a business, you, whatever. <laughs> so what I used to do up until very recently is I basically would draw, I'd pull ads out of fashion magazines and I would just draw what I see. And I think that that was my way of proving to myself that I could do art. But, and though they're freehand drawings, it's essentially just copying what I see, right? And I don't think that that makes me unique as an artist. So I started doing freehand drawing where I just was inspired by a picture and did my own version of it. So this was a few years ago. And this is a young lady I follow on Instagram and I just loved her red hair and her cool glasses. And this is a little oil pastel that I did. So does it look exactly like her? No, it's my rendition of her. Okay, so this is where I started to realize, okay, Lauren, just chill out. You don't have to be a perfect artist and make every line look exactly like the picture. Do your own thing. So then fast forward to what I'm doing currently. And this, these two pieces right here, I don't know if you can see, these are the first two pieces that I've ever done based on photos. This is a Greek dude, a Greek dude that I know. <laughs> he has no idea that I was so inspired. Here he is. He, he's about to take a puff of a cigarette, as so many Greek men do. And here he is blowing out some smoke. <laughs> anyway, that's when I said, okay, let me make it look sort of like him, not exactly like him, and let me put my spin on it. Now... One of my problems in art, and this is one of the things that's held me back. You know how in life we hold ourselves back a little bit? We do. We do. We just do. So in my mind, I was thinking, oh, no, I've not been classically trained as an artist. I only took a semester of fashion sketching. I don't know what I'm doing. It's not going to be perfect. Oh, my goodness. Then I decided a couple months ago, forget about all that. Just draw. Just draw. You can make a ton of mistakes. So I decided to do a series of little pictures based on pictures, photos I took at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. And I decided that I would do ink sketching. No pencils allowed. Hey, thank you, Samina. No pencils allowed. Just do it all in pen. And if you make a mistake, who cares? It's not a mistake. You just fix it. So this is one that I did. This is in San Antonio. This is the Manger Hotel's courtyard all done in pen. I was trying to prove to myself that you don't have to hyperventilate every time you sit down and do a piece of art and think it has to be perfect. No, you, this is a language I'm communicating. This is my interpretation of a piece. Um, and this is, uh, this is based in Santorini. I was on a boat, did a little boat cruise and I had taken a picture myself. So I decided to do this here recently. And then the botanical gardens, all done in pen. This is the cactus garden. And I, I made sure that I only spent maybe 45 minutes to an hour on each one. And I was trying to prove to myself that I could create a pretty piece of art in a short period of time that expresses the, the overall impression and look and feel of a subject. And I can go back and color it later. I'm thinking about having these uh, put up on post, like postcard note cards. And I'm thinking about even doing something like this for different cities I travel to. Do sort of uh, a cultural, I guess, homage to a particular city. And do... now I'm really rambling. Um, no, but... I love doing that. And I love that you pointed out that, you know, you're doing it for yourself. You know, you, you have this insecurity that, it might not be perfect, but you're going to do it. You overcame that whole insecurity and did it. I think that's exactly how I feel about photography right now. I just picked it up. And I, I mm -hmm. have no background in it at all. And it was the one of the scariest things for me for a long time because I didn't know how to use, you know, all the, the buttons and the settings. And it was very intimidating. But I was like, just recently, I was like, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to share it even if it's bad. So thank you for sharing that because that's exactly how I feel. 
but and I like that you're, I like that you're delving into this field of photography, and it makes sense for you, Anne, because you've already been in the background doing videography, and you do a lot of prep work, and you already do a lot of photography, um, and and you'll I like what I'm seeing so far, and you'll because you're a person who's determined to do things right, you're going to do all the studying up, and you're going to practice, and you'll just continue evolving this. I'm calling it an art form because photography is an art form. I, I thank you for saying that. And I'm very thankful for our creative community because everyone here is the same. I can see how they, when they start something, they are going to research it and study it and, and build on it. You know, even though it's uncomfortable and scary at first, you know, they're, they're going to stick it through. So I just want to thank yeah. for our creative community. You guys, um, you guys are you guys are just always there building each other up so thank you for that um lauren thank you for you know sharing everything uh, you know so I learned a lot um just during the question um i know you ha you may have a couple of color um activities or you may yeah i i want to i want to say one more thing about art if i may and yep. just creative pursuits in general and then I want to give a couple of color exercises. So this is what I wanted to say about art. And, and I've had many discussions with some professional artist friends of mine whom I greatly respect. People do business with people they like. And the same holds true in the creative field. And that is to say that even if I create art that doesn't look, quote, perfect and it's not Monet level quality, because it won't be, people will buy art from me because they like me and what I've produced resonates somehow with them. So I really come to the conclusion that I can just set aside this notion of perfectionism and um, feeling inadequately because I don't have an art degree and just really going for it and understanding that my audience will, will appear at the right time and my art will evolve as well. Uh, so then this goes for anyone in the creative community, whatever it is that you're doing as a creative entrepreneur, um, do your thing and develop your skill set and your look and your unique aesthetic of whatever it is you're producing. And then I think that's the truest and best way to do a create, to run a creative business. That's encouraging. And we know, look at her, encouraging everyone up here. <laughs> yeah. I try. You. So do we have a couple of minutes to talk about some little color exercises? We have about 10 minutes. So yeah. Okay, I'll be brief. I want to show how, why certain colors work better than others. This is the best example to use. Okay. Can everybody agree that, can you see okay? That this color is super bright. Can y'all see that? It's, well, you're not, you can't really answer me, but I'm just going to tell you, if you looked at this in person, you'd see, this is super duper bright, almost neon. This color here is a better choice to go with these other two colors if we were doing some type of interior scheme, because they all have about the same level of saturation or intensity. They're pretty bright colors, but... They're not as bright as this one. See, this one's a little out of place. It's just, just a tag too much. So whenever you're mixing and matching colors, you can mix and match just about any colors in your home. Hi, Kathy, thank you, you saw it. You can mix and match almost any color in your home, but you wanna make sure that the intensity or saturation is about equal. I'll give you another example here. These all coordinate well together. Let me just pull some colors out here. Okay. These all work together. They're all muted, soft, toned down. If I were to try to go and put that same green in here with it, see how it looks completely out of place? So muted or quote dirty colors go with other muted colors and clean, vibrant colors go with other clean, vibrant colors. Let me give you another example, sort of the opposite. Let's look at very vibrant colors. 
And that can translate to your warmth as well. Oh, yes. So see how these are about, they're both saturated colors. We've got a tomato red here and this apple green. So let's say I wanted to bring in a really nice shade of blue in here. This is okay. It's kind of blah. It's a little too muted. But if we were to bring in something that has more saturation, do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just make sure for every, so everyone can see this. I use full spectrum lighting, by the way, here. So that's why my lights are so bright, so you can see these colors. See how this blue right here I just held up? It's just bleh. It looks boring. You need some oomph. So, oh, you saw it, Roz. Okay. Bright color, but Roz, you already knew this stuff. Uh, and Kathy, you did too, I think. Okay, so bright colors go with bright colors. Uh, muted colors go with muted colors. You don't really want to mix the two. And this is why, back to my point about bright white, you don't put bright white trims and accents and cabinetry in a home that has soft, muted grages and earthy tones and, you know, uh, muted aqua blues and sage greens. It just is shocking. It looks too much. It looks like primer on the wall. Have you used the grayscale to tone match? To tone match. I'm not sure of what you're asking me. I do use the grayscale, but when you say to tone match, I don't, I'm not understanding exactly what you're asking me. At Jeweler's Bench, maybe you'd clarify um, that question. So I do have a question. Um, can, like, let's say the whites, we're talking about the white, let's say, trims. can a white trim be different shades of white depending on the color, um, depending on the colors in the rooms? Like, let's just talking about the whites, you know what I'm saying? Because the yeah, like, can, you, can you mix some different whites in a room? You mean for so, the corporate? Like, but would you change the trim shade of um, trim white one room from another, depending on the lighting in there? Not no. And and let me say something. A lot of people get hung up on the lighting. A lot of times people say, "Well, the lighting is making the paint look wrong." No. What's making the paint look wrong usually is that that particular paint color doesn't coordinate with all the other colors in the room. Okay. See what I mean? Um, but to answer your question, whenever I go to a home, my job is to create harmony and flow. So typically. I recommend one trim color that is going to be used for most doors, accents, cabinetry. Can I find the perfect tone match? Um, use your, I, if I don't really know what you mean about cameras and grayscale filters and stuff. I, and as for tone match, if you're talking about paint colors, I mean, Benjamin Moore has a tons of tools that they use for that. So I'm, you're, you're welcome to send me a direct message, um, jeweler's bench, ma'am. You can send me a direct message and maybe I can, I'll be happy to answer your question. I'm just not understanding what you're asking. Yeah. All right. Okay. So who had fun? You guys have fun. <laughs> so basically to find harmony, you, you go in there and you make sure you, find harmony. you bring harmony into um, people's environment and, and lives now. So, and it's, I always give a little bonus whenever I go into an interior consultation, especially I always throw in a trim color and a ceiling color. That's that fifth wall that people forget about you guys. The ceiling color, you gotta have a nice crisp, crisp ceiling and it's not always a bright white either. That's why people hire me because I'm gonna give you these little pointers. And then sometimes people will say, oh, I want an accent color in my home. What should I do? And then I'll pull out my color, board, color uh, chart and I'll say, hey, why don't you add you know, why don't you do a little teal right now? That would look nice. You know, I give little tidbits, little what we call in Louisiana, little lanyards, little gifts, little extras in my consultations. Uh, you know, I did. I never thought about on the you know in my home. You know, so thanks for teaching us all these little details to think about. I am you know going to be in the process of house shopping, so these are going to be things that came out soon. So, Good. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate everybody here who, who attended the call and the questions that you've had. And I get distracted with the comments. So if I missed your comment and you feel like I didn't answer your question, send me a direct message, please. Yes, feel free to message her at color. Her, her, LFB color. Yeah, her Instagram handle at LFB color. Lauren, are there any other ways that you is just your Instagram? Uh, mainly my Instagram, and you can email me at, it's just lauren at lfbcolor.com. You're welcome, Carrie. Kathy says, thank you, Lauren. 
Again, so much fabrics. Heart, heart. Carrie, oh, Samina. Great. Thank you so much, Samina. Actually, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, some of the ladies on here had their color done for awards. So now you guys can think about this is the next stage to think, start thinking about the colors in your home and going to um, affect you and your mood. So thank you so much, Lauren. Um, I, I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. And everyone on here, you guys are, going, you guys are now officially witness to um, Lauren's Dream Big, um, where she goes international soon. So you guys all are, are to be like a, a witness to her Look, job. let me say this technically i'm already international in a way because i went back in february to athens and i had a business meeting two days in a row at the acropolis museum looking over the ancient ruins of the acropolis so we already got some business started so hopefully uh it, this is a sign of great things to come there you go it's going to be full blown full blown <laughs> Hopefully. Well, thank you so much for having me. I don't know how to exit this live. Do you just kick me out or how do I do it? No, don't exit yet because I <laughs> ask guests, um, if they have you know, saying a quote or, you know, maybe a scripture that they'd like to share to, to continue and inspire someone out there. But, and so that's how we conclude it. So do you have a favorite? Cool. Oh, yes, I do. Um, I've been really praying on this one for, I've been uh, praying about it, uh, praying on this scripture. I've memorized it in English and Spanish, and I'm working on it in Greek right now. It's from Philippians chapter four, six, verses six to seven, and it's, be fearful or anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace, I'm getting it wrong, the peace which transcends trans, uh, all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you, everyone on here for joining us, taking the time out of your day to join, learn to grow, and to be creative and moving forward. Um, so Patrick says, write the vision, make it plain. Yes. And Roz, as soon as, Roz, as soon as I have the vision, after all this daydreaming I've been doing and this plotting, I will write it down and make it plain. <laughs> it's got to be made plain first. <laughs> Very Kim, high five. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, Thank you. And before I let you guys go, please, please, please take care of yourself. Way something small, big, take care of yourself. Um, take care of each other. Reach out to one person. Call, text them and just to see how they're doing and you guys just have a wonderful, wonderful day and again thank you lauren so much for coming on and um and joining me thanks for having me seriously thank you big hugs to you everyone you guys uh, take care <laughs> take care you guys bye bye everybody